who or evil people. But first, if we work for peace, we cannot truly work for peace unless we have peace in ourselves, unless we have love in ourselves. Well, that's then <clears throat> you can work for peace and you can be crucified if necessary it is. But you cannot suffer and work finally. And this is the solution of the modern world. Yeah, but no, my no, no, Christian no, at communism. Point, at that point, let me go back to, to John and George. I mean, is this fair, the, the parallel that's been being drawn here between your sort of getting very involved with meditation and that somehow being very, very selfish no, and not caring about the world. What you're saying about selfishness is it sounds like you're going to sit down in silence all the time. You know, you do it in the morning, say, to do your day's action, whatever it is, better. But you're putting it down saying, we can't con sit down contemplating our navels while all this is going on. No, the whole point of doing it is to have more energy and more control over yourself to be able to do whatever I action you want to do. Anyone would argue with that for a moment. If you're some going to us, what some of us are Quakers, and we've been practicing yes. what some people would call a form of meditation, which has driven the Society of Friends into into action. Now, yeah. after last after last week's uh, wonderful program, we were very impressed, and people have been saying to us, "There's well, a couple of lads there who are natural Quakers." <laughs> now, do they think they're Quakers? Well, it's all the same. This is the point we've got to try and get over to people that religion. It's only there's only one God, and they're all a branch of the same thing. And the sooner people get over this sectarianism, the better, you know. I mean, I'm a Quaker, I'm a Christian, I'm a Buddhist, and I'm a Hindu. And it's all the same. Well, that's what Quakers have been saying for the last 300 well, years. Yes. Well, the 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 Quakers. in all of us. <laughs> Bully for the Quakers. <laughs> but I want to come back on this thing of action. It's a commonplace that we live very much on the surface of our mind in relation to the surface of events. This is a very weak situation. Now, we all, it's also commonplace that there's a great depth in every human mind. Mm -hmm. All this transcendental meditation is, is a simple technique of coming to the deepest aspect of that, having established oneself in that state to come out and act, like pulling a arrow back on a bow. If you don't know about shooting an arrow, you say, what on earth are you pulling it back for? But this is the whole technique of shooting the arrow. Yes, but then you see there is in this belief a, a kind of faith in a transcendental will in the universe, oh. which I don't happen to there share. No but I think you can waste a tremendous all. lot of time trying to get in a state of bliss and in communion with that. Well, mm. just just let me just, just take this is, is there, there, There's no faith yes. at all, John no. Allison. No. This is a perceptual method. It's absolutely unconcerned with well, conceptual apparatus. I don't think the Maharishi made it that clear to us, really. Well, you call it experience. Is this the word you're looking for? an experience. It's experiential. But do you find... John and George, that your beliefs have altered as a result of meditation? No, they've been strengthened. But I've always believed this for the last couple of years, but through the meditation it's just strengthened it. You see, all these doctrines and beliefs that have been laid down by great prophets, they've been put down there because these people have actually experienced it. And by their experience with some form of truth, they've tried to put it out for all the rest of the people to take up. But his argument is just based on no experience at all. You said just now that you're a Hindu, you're a Buddhist, you're a Christian, you're all of these. Yes. Uh, people think of those things normally as different. Yes. What is it, in what way is it that they're all the same? Well, because it's teaching the people through various forms how to approach God, and God being the, the one and only creator. But is they're this experience different... driving our friends into some kind of community? This is what's bothering us a bit. Yes. Is this something you must do on your own, or does it lead you into uh, community action? Well, now, you I must wonder... do it on your own to attain your own uh, bliss state. Naturally, it's something that Jesus said, something about go and fix your own house first. And that's what you've got to do. Everybody goes and fixes themselves up. And when they're all straight, then they're all able to act together, because we're all one anyway whether you like it or not. And there, work? I'm afraid, we have to take a break. Mm -hmm. We'll be back yeah, in a trice. <laughs> Welcome back. Um, we've got about three more things to do in the second half tonight, but... Uh, it's quite clear, talking to the audience and so on, during the break, that uh, 
there's a lot more to be said on this subject, so uh, we'll scrap the rest and we'll carry on with this. Um, do you think it's fair what's been said so far by John Mortimer and so on, suggesting that meditation is selfish? I don't see how it's selfish. If uh, We've no need to be here. You know, I mean, we don't sort of dig doing TV for the fun of it. We're here just because we want, you know, we believe in meditation. And so we that's believe not very we, can, we can sort of maybe help a few other people to understand that it's, you know, that it's easy. Well, we've not got no need to be here either, really. And uh, well, well, that's, not, that's all we're not saying. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're not but, claiming your selfishness. And, and I would like to understand. I think that perhaps we should try and get it a little clearer. Uh, what we're talking about, if we're talking about a mystical religious belief, which I think that George Harrison is, because he talked about the divine laws and it's not sun, mystical. Get up you know, mysticism. Get up. Well, let me just finish yes. this. Then that's one thing, which. I would dispute, but I would like to to ask John Ellis Anderson whether really this has got anything to do with a belief in God at all. Because if all we're talking about is a technique of self-examination which you can perform over shaving in the morning and then go out and help mankind more as a result of having <coughs> done it, then nobody in their senses would dispute that it was a very excellent thing to do. But are we talking about that or are we talking about a universe which has some hidden laws and a hidden creator who manifests himself only to people like Mr. Harrison and the Maharishi when they get into a state of trance. That's what I want to know. Well, let's face it, these laws that you say, hidden laws, they are hidden, but they're only hidden by our own ignorance. And the word mysticism is just being arrived at through people's ignorance. There's nothing mystical about it, only that you're ignorant of what that entails. Well, everybody with any religious belief has always thought that everybody else was ignorant about its mystical value. But are we really talking about mysticism, or are we talking about a technique of improving yourself, which is totally scientific and you rational? You can take it either way. You can take it either way. Well, that be... This is because it is a perceptual method. If a man has got a great conceptual apparatus and he meditates, he will begin to understand the nature of the conceptual apparatus. And if he's wrong about it, he will begin to understand where he's wrong about it. If he's got no conceptual apparatus, he simply perceives an abstract experience. Huh? Now, when he's had an abstract experience, he may wish then to give himself explanations of it. But it's uh, primarily a perceptual method. And how, for everybody, do you define the word perceptual then? Experience rather than thinking about something. Not an idea, not an attitude, not a belief, an experience. It's the difference conceptual is, is biological textbook. Going for a walk in the country is an experience. They refer to each other, but they're in different situations. In and so what this offers why is an experience. Yes, yes. 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 But why should this abstract experience be any more valuable than any other experience? You see, George Harrison talked about a bliss experience. Well, you can have a bliss experience by drinking a bottle of whiskey. No, no, no. Now, you get a no, hang no. of no. you know, why, yes. why is, a bi why yeah, is his man, bliss no, no. experience, a hell of a non -bliss his abstract experience next morning, bliss experience, in any way more valuable <laughs> well, than no, anybody no, else's bliss important. experience? You are uh, notoriously a sort of anti-God man, Not but really. if you no, tell I'm me that the against. God you don't that you don't believe in, I'm sure well, we'd all say we didn't believe in him either. But one isn't talking about belief; one is talking about experience, and this experience is an inner experience. And having had this experience, or having this experience, you then have to describe it. And certainly there is a language to describe it. But it's something that can be talked about. It's something that is actual, that happens as much as the historical. Thing. Yes, but look, but I mean, the thing is that what is the difference then? I mean, what what is the difference between the experience, the two things that John has just said? What is the difference between a bliss experience through meditation and assuming it's possible a bliss experience, <laughs> experience through drinking, as I sound as I'm doing at the moment, um, a <laughs> bottle of whiskey? Because the bottle of whiskey one is relative. It's could be relative bliss, depending on how intoxicated you got. <laughs> Whereas the meditation, you go beyond this ordinary experience that's on the relative level of experience. It's beyond that. And this is why you, you can't tell the people about it, really. <laughs> it's something that if they did it themselves, then they'd know because they'd actually experience the thing. But you can't talk about an abstract experience. You can't really put it into words. But you see, that's what Dr. Alison has talked about.